So next up, we have another panel. We have uh, Arizona Department of Corrections again, but this is actually going to be our education departments. So they will be working on their presentation. And then again, if you have any questions at the end, and then we will actually break for lunch after that. So without further ado, we'd like you all to please come up and introduce yourselves. OK, good afternoon. It's afternoon, right, after 12? Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Bridget Carrington, and I am the Southern Region Education Director for Arizona Department of Corrections. Um, I'd like to extend a thank you for inviting us to Jessica and Corey. I don't see her. She's in here somewhere. Um, and on behalf of our education administrator, Mark Jones, and my counterpart, Tim Lawrence, we'd like to say thank you for the collaboration that we have with you at our Iman and Florence complex. So yes, my name is Bridget Carrington, and I will introduce uh, the rest of the panel with me. Um, we have Dr. Laura Metcalf, who is the supervisor at Florence complex, and we have George Arhin, who is a supervisor at the Florence Complex. It's uh, good afternoon. We heard a lot of uh, awareness, and uh, I hope uh, these slides here is going to kind of solve, answer, and uh, put some issues in perspective uh, the panel before us uh, brought up. So, well, that, that was my name and that's how I spelled, so. Um, <laughs> so with, uh, with, with this, uh, I would like to start with the programs that uh, we offer uh, at uh, all, all our complexes or some of the complexes that uh, um, exist. Um, we, we offer the TABE, we call the TABE, but um, previously, you've had mandatory literacy, you've had uh, functional literacy. It's all the eighth, it, it just means the eighth grade level program. So we have, um, in a classroom, you're going to see a range of students, like uh, the previous panel said. So we have, we've, we've just categorized it into uh, z zero grade to three. That's the ABE1 and uh, zero, uh, 4 to 6, which is the ABE2, and then uh, 7 to 8, which is the ABE3. So um, our teachers are doing, um, I, I'll say they're doing some magic in that classroom, having this range of uh, in intellects, intellects in the class and uh, bring them up to the level of uh, eighth grade certification. Uh, moving on with that, <clears throat> when they graduate the eighth grade certification, they do the GED. Uh, GED has transformed uh, since 2014. Uh, PSN View has uh, given us the opportunity to use technology to uh, do the testing. So feedback um, in terms of um, results, scores, and prescriptions are available very quickly. So this is helping us uh, re-teach, re, um, re-educate, um, and get them back on track to uh, pass this GED. Uh, we have improved a lot. We used to have just those two sessions, uh, the eighth grade and the GED. Now we have high schools coming into our, our correctional settings. At the moment, we have Tucson. We have uh, Lewis Perryville. Uh, it's moving along very quickly. Uh, Florence is the last on the list, but we're going to get it. It's, it's going to happen. So with that, uh, our, our high school is in two, in two parts as well. We have the minors, which is the uh, Life Learning Academy, and we have the, uh, what do you call, adults, that's age 22 and up, that is uh, also uh, called the Success Academy. Um, with, with uh, all the new changes and everything coming up, we have the education TV that exists uh, just at this time at Florence and Iman. Um, we have a certified teacher who puts on all the programs that 
both for both uh, the TABE and the GED. So they, those who cannot access the classroom have the opportunity to um, watch these programs, do a, a sort of correspondence, uh, quizzes, tests, and all that to prepare them for the actual test. So when they um, graduate, the, the teacher is going to send him to a teacher in the classroom where he can fiscally come out and uh, actually participate in the um, certification test. When they graduate GED, well, with the, with the ATV, there is also a vocational training videos that can be accessed as well. Now, with that, you don't have a certificate, but you get knowledge of, I'll say, terminologies in waste management, terminologies in um, um, auto mechanics. So there are several, we actually it's called uh, vocational based uh, education on that one. So when they are done with that, you move on to your CTE or distance learning. Now, CTE, Career Technical Education, is uh, statewide. Uh, you have, um, Florence has a bunch, so we did use uh, Florence as an example, which I'll be coming up to that in a second. But um, with, I want to mention some of them. Yuma has, Missionary, yes, missionary. Florence has HVAC, you have building maintenance, you have welding, you have carpentry, you have upholstery. It's, it's a wide range. It transfers to uh, Iman as well. So um, that's, that's what the CT programs are coming up with at this time. Uh, distance learning, we've been, we've been in uh, collaboration with uh, Rio Salado. And um, it's, it's, it's pre pretty interesting. Um, inmates are taking these courses and graduating as well. Um, the most interesting thing and reason why we are here is ASU. Um, ASU came into the department uh, probably six, seven years ago. And um, they are giving our students or inmates extra time to, I, I, I will term it as self-help courses because they don't get credit for it. And um, they come in and learn things like psychology and uh, creative writing. I've been in a poetry, poetry class and I was wondering, oh, I, I don't think I have the um, mental to do this, but they, they, they sit there and do that. And Dr. Lockhart did a good job with them a couple of years ago when I visited that classroom. So on that, no, we have some information that we would like to share uh, just to see, just for you to see what we are doing because of the difficulty um, of teaching or instructing the inmates in the classroom. So this is just uh, which our di director monitors our performance uh, for the complexes within the Department of Corrections. So that's the list right there, Douglas, Iman, Florence. And the QM and FYI is just uh, cumulative enrollment for the fiscal year. Um, I'll, I'll do Florence because I'm familiar with Florence. So Florence has 347 uh, completions for the year is 224 average improvement, and that's the key thing that we look at as well, that this is a difficult group that we teach, so um, are we gonna look at only completions for our teachers? No, we look at the uh, learning gains as well, so that's the average improvement for literacy. And then the number of days of completion, this is the average, so if you are in Florence, these numbers are for February, by the way, if you are in Florence, it might take you about 76 days to uh, complete. So you are going from a zero or a three grade level all the way to eight grade. So 
I, I like to say they are doing a good job. The other section is GED. Um, <laughs> the cumulated enrollment for Florence is 152, and completions for the year is four, and uh, completions for that month was two. Now you're gonna ask why that qu those numbers are very low. They are very low because we just started that uh, Pearson View uh, revision 2014 for GED. It's um, the testing was forthcoming. We, we, we had to, the department had to come up with computers and go through all those um, issues that computers cannot get into the uh, units. So it took us a while and the department has resolved that. So we have two testers that goes around the state and um, they have six laptops, set it up, log in, it shoots to Pearson View's uh, mainframe, main, I'm not technical, sorry, but it goes into something and the test comes up, they take the test and uh, it's done. Now the key thing is the score was very, um, I'd say for the 14 months of testing, um, it, it was very high. So at this point, um, <clears throat> it's, it's been brought down a little bit to passing score as 145. And so um, I think April 1st is when we should see an update for Department of, from the Department of Corrections. So that number might change, um, I don't want to say drastically, but it might fall up about 20% up. So I have some numbers down there for you. And uh, the 3% represents the GED completions. Uh, fiscal year up to February, we have 67% uh, completions for our mandatory literacy. And then uh, with a combination of the two, because our classrooms, you might have a teacher that has two um, programs running at the same time, the mandatory literacy and the GED and uh, an average completions up to February uh, 2016 is uh, 48%. So um, the interesting thing about the CTE program that I wanted to talk about earlier, uh, HVAC uh, just started about uh, August and each program runs about six to eight months. So they are getting close to completions, but there's a zero graduation rate as of now. Uh, building and maintenance, um, highly patronized at each unit. And uh, the six graduations, we lost the teacher in between uh, last year, and we just hired a new one. We have enrollment, which is 15, graduation is six, because they were from the previous class. Uh, welding at South Unit has 62 enrollments uh, throughout the fiscal year, and completion is 38. Now, I want to bring to your attention that um, the previous panel mentioned about movements from the units to other complexes. This is the effect because welding, upholstery, and carpentry has been in existence for um, three years, three or four years. So the enrollment you're seeing, uh, the completions you're seeing is just the effect of the uh, transit uh, people that were supposed to graduate before the time that kept moving out. So we lost some, we lost some of the um, potential graduations. ETV, like I said, was uh, only for uh, Iman and Florence, but as prison awareness is coming, is the, it's, it's, it's blooming really. Um, I know there's an intention to do uh, expansion statewide. It's not implemented yet, but there's the intention to do that. Uh, this is the performance for uh, ETV. Uh, at the moment, between Iman and Florence, the enrollment is 400. So that's, that's a huge number. Uh, we can see the completions. Our redrawals, uh, it's almost, you know, 50-50 with the completions as well. But you have active um, enrollments within the vocational, which is 125. 
Uh, the GED and functional lit is 12, seems to be very little, which is true because if you can't really read and write, it's going to be difficult for you to participate. So most of these are those who are very close to uh, self-study. Uh, so, um, and our high school numbers, uh, Lewis just started, so it's zero. Um, Perryville is 34 up to February, and we have 13 graduations. Tucson adults, we have 12 graduations, and Tucson minors, high enrollment, as you can see, is 80, and you have one at a time. Yuma, 16, and graduation is one as well. So highlights, um, I, I just want to touch on just a few things that um, it's showing that there is that prison education awareness uh, within the department as well. Uh, change in population. Um, South, who's been central? Some, some of you have been in central before. Central is the max unit. Um, prior to 2014, there used to be enclosures lined up along the walls, and this is where the maximum students will get into that cage and it's locked up, and you just have a little um, opening where you pass in the books and the pencils. Um, I, I, I'm surprised myself, but those cages are all gone. No enclosures, no more. It's just a uh, table, chair, pencil, paper, and class is going on as, uh, as it should. Uh, education impact. Our teachers are all certified. Um, this education impact program was brought in by an uh, administrator to help um, professional developments for our teachers. And pretty much we are just going closer and closer and closer to all the mandates that uh, the school districts outside the um, prison requires. Uh, high school diplomas, um, basically we've adopted the high school systems and we have we have registers, we have uh, principals, we have all that uh, standards by Department of Education that we are following. So yeah, we we we, we transforming that prison uh, education as well. Arizona Home Builders Association. I'm not going to say too much about it, but it's part of the transition as um, we've mentioned before. Um, we are in partnership with those uh, associations and creating jobs before the inmates even leaves uh, to go back after release. Uh, Pell Grant slash um, Second Chance Grant, that is uh, something that I can't walk through East Unit without getting a question. When am I getting my Pell Grant? When am I getting my Pell Grant? Well, that's um, an amazing thing that has um, come up now. ASU is in partnership with us um, starting next academic year to have um, um, most likely on campus um, classroom um, for liberal arts. So that's a great thing. I think it's going to be at North and East, North and East unit. So those, the, these are the interesting things that I, uh, we thought we might share with you. But the next, uh, next is Dr. Markov, and she's going to give you more details into the grants and uh, ESU programs. Thank you. Looks good, doesn't it? All right, well, I'm Dr. Metcalf. You can call me Laura. Um, let me give you a little background about me. I've spent the last 20 years in public education. 16 of that I have been um, in public school administration. I have been a high school principal. I have been a career and technical education director. I was a high school business teacher before I was uh, drafted into being as I was walking through the office. That's how I became an administrator. I said, no. They're like, yeah, and you'll do it. And I said, OK. If I have to have a job, that's what I'll do. Um, I graduated from ASU twice, and I have also graduated from NAU, easy, three times. 
All right. The only one I haven't touched yet was U of A, and my dad graduated from there. So um, part of my job that I do at the correction, I'm a correctional education program supervisor, and part of what I do is I also facilitate the ASU education program. Thank you very much for all of you who are here. We are so excited. And so am I, because Corey, I have great plans for next year. Start recruiting some volunteers, because I've got plans. Let's go. So I firmly believe in education as a transformational element for anybody. And most of my career, I have worked with what you would call the bottom feeder students, the at-risk students, the students no one cares about. Um, when I was a teacher, I got all the students who couldn't graduate. I was a principal, I got all the students from inner city, I had 13 gangs on one of my campuses, and part of my job as a principal of an inner city school was to shoo away those employees of the world's oldest, pop uh, world's oldest occupation. Make a long story short, I had one of those employees of the world's, world's oldest occupation, I'm hopeful you are aware of what I'm talking about because I didn't want to use the term, um, come in and ask me for help. And this is, that was a transformational uh, piece for me when I, uh, lady of the evening, came in and said, I need help. You're the only person that I talked to, even though I had them arrested. Um, I need help. And I said, what do you need? I need daycare. I need medical. I need an education. So from there, as a middle, as a, as a, um, as a principal of an inner city school, we started the first GED program. And that is how I became involved with individuals and adults who ended up being lost in the system, forgotten in the system, and dropped out of the system. And so as an educational program supervisor for the Florence Complex, I am very passionate about helping those who have been not looked at, not absorbed. I get an older version of where I was at before I became an educational supervisor. I worked with detained youth as a director of special education and a director of program, federal programs and grant writer to bring them from that, hopefully not to where I am. And I'm seeing an older version of what I've seen as, as an administrator for detained youth. So with that in mind, let's roll through what we're doing at Florence. Again, ASU, thank you so much for being a part of it. We love you. The students love you. And we love you lots. So come on back. Here we go. All right, so that's a little hard to see. But part of what I do and what I'm very passionate about is grants. And at the Florence Prison, we are going to be a transformational unit. We are actively, aggressively, and thoughtfully pursuing what's called the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Grant. It is a federal program that serves underserved individuals to get job training, education, post-secondary education, and um, workforce development. This is a very small version of a, of a visual framework that I have created. And our first element here is to break down our adult basic education or our, can I carry something around? I gotta walk. Is there an empty? No, I need a microphone. It's a little stuck. All right, so I'm, all right, so here I am. So I'm gonna walk around out here and so I can point to you the basic areas. We're gonna break down our functional education into three levels, which is beginning literacy, zero to three, Grades ABE 1, 2.8 to 3.9, ABE 2, 4.0 to grades 5.9, and ABE 1. We are going to implement accountability and uh, what we call success performance measures. Our students and our teachers will be responsible for assisting our students in those, uh, to meet these federal guidelines in order to um, facilitate additional success. So I'll, I won't go into all that detail for you, but you can see they're pretty aggressive and we are looking forward to being able to serve and support those students. All right, so training in Arizona adult education standards will be a mandatory and functional part of our program based on Common Core. Everyone's probably heard of Common Core. Um, and the staff at the Florence Unit will begin this um, July 2016. All right, second part of the WIOA grant that Florence will be aggressively pursuing is that of the ECAP-A, Education Career Action Plan A for Adult. 
by law in public school education, the ECAP is part of K-12, or excuse me, high school education. We're going to take that to another level at the Florence Complex. We're going to make that for adults. Each adult will have an opportunity to be able to, to create personal academic goals for their education and apply those goals directly to an occupational or post-secondary education area for them to be successful in and out of, of the incarcerated world. We're also going to open what we call the College and Career Education Transition Centers. We're starting today, actually, with an education, college, excuse me, College and Career Education Transition Program at our South Unit, which is for our sex offenders. We have 12 organizations joining us today to go over educational opportunities and occupational opportunities for each inmate to be able to become aware of what their options are. But once this moves, we will put this into each of our libraries, and this will be a center that will be open for every student and every inmate. Okay, so I've already talked about the Education and Career Action Plan and adult, their goals, and the College and Career Education Transition Fair that's taking place today that will turn into a center that will operate every day for every inmate. Next part that we're going to talk about are workforce preparation. How many of you have degrees and have had a tough time finding a job? Oh, I'm the only one in the room? Wow. Okay, there's three of us. All right. Well, we're going to put an end to that. We are going to offer an opportunity for the student to be able to put their skills that they've learned in the classroom into a sense of reality. And so what we're going to do is provide additional support and instruction in how to create a resume. How do you show up at a job interview and not wear torn jeans? How do you show up at, a, at work and be able to time manage, communicate, problem solve, and, and conflict resolution, create, create conflict resolution? We're going to give them those skills. A lot of them get that through the CO3 programming that you've learned earlier, but we're going to hit it hard within our classrooms because it's part of our program that we're looking to transform. We're also partnering with the One Stop Centers. Has anyone ever heard of the One Stop Centers? One, okay. Two, three, all right, same three that we're trying to find jobs. All right. So One Stop Centers are an opportunity for external transition. We are going to hopefully, if we get this grant, uh, hire somebody with these funds to case manage our students who will then have a plan once they graduate once they leave, graduate from incarceration, to hook them up with a position on the outside. Now, yes, they do get that assistance as well through parole, probation, and their CO3, but we're going to do that as a tightened portion of our educational program. Um, they will be instrumental in, in connecting inmates to the outside for job resources and information. Okay. The last part I'd like to talk about is our adult secondary education, GED, um, also called secondary equivalency degree. Uh, we also have two breakdowns in this area called adult secondary education one, adult secondary education two, same thing as GED, and we also have our success performance measures uh, that we will uh, track and provide support for our teachers once we get going, if we get funded, we're gonna get funded. Uh, the WIOA grant will allow us to purchase additional resources for our students, who then, well, for our teachers, really, and then who will then pass that on to our teachers. Um, so once we meet those uh, success performance measures, that will be instrumental in helping us to be success as a whole. Um, prior to my arrival, we did not have a unit mission vision um, and strategic plan. We have created a mission and vision as of yesterday with my teacher, um, leadership program. We are moving to our strategic plan starting next week, and we will be fruitful and forward moving by the end of April. Okay, whoops, I got a couple more areas. Post-secondary training and education. We are mobilizing our post-secondary partners, ASU, Central Arizona College, and any other organization that supports inmate education will be first and foremost on this list. ASU is already there. We already have them on the list. We've already partnered. We've talked about it. I think they're in. I hope everybody else is in. Um, but we are going to provide a wealth of opportunities for our inmates once they finish their GED 
they have three months to be able to choose to either move to a post-secondary training option or an employment option. And this right here will be a key piece because with a GED, that's one type of life. With, a high, with an associate's degree, that's another type of life. With a bachelor's, that's another type of life. And with a master's, that's another type of life. They get to pick, and we're going to give them opportunities to pick. So we have mobilized the partnership of multiple post-secondary institutions to assist us with putting life to their college and career action plan adult. Their goals, their education, their occupations will all become a real thing rather than just a piece of paper. All right, most importantly, teachers, professors, all need to have professional development. Having been a teacher and administrator, professional development for a teacher is critical. So what we're going to do is we have an active partnership with Central Arizona College to provide us and our staff with active, relevant, and data-managed professional development that will be on the ground, forward-moving for each teacher in our unit while we transform and during our transformation. Those discussions will continue, and that will be part of, and is a requirement of, our grant should we be funded. All right, here we go. All right, ASU. ASU will be a key player in our Second Chance Pell Grant. It's not our grant. It's theirs. And we are hopeful that they will be able to be funded um, because at this point, it will be an opportunity, a real live, face-to-face, -face, liberal arts degree on the ground, in the classroom, with real instructors, not that you guys aren't real instructors, you guys are, but professors, they are, that bring the reality of ASU to Florence. That's it. That's where we're going. We want it day to day. Yes, ma'am. It's all paper-based. There are no computers. They can't use it. Um, and ASU will be able to bring in those um, paper books, those books and those resources um, directly to a traditional delivery, not a hybrid delivery, not an online delivery, face-to-face -face traditional delivery. Yes, sir. Why aren't inmates allowed to use online or hybrid models? They are not allowed to act, address or access the internet because um, of the outside sources that are out there. Um, connections with others, which you mentioned that. Um, it's just not an opportunity for them to be able to use the internet because they are not allowed to send emails. Uh, they're not allowed to access internet websites. Um, none of that. That's a policy that no one's asked me to put into place, but that's what, our, that's what we're doing. Yes, and, and you're right. Um, access to the internet is a daily skill. And it is something that each of us take advantage of every day. But um, I can't tell you at this point in time if there are individuals working to change that. At this point, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. State by state policy. So those are the folks that make more money than me. Any other questions? OK. Um, all right, so we are looking to take, uh, there, there's a possibility within this grant to take this um, to two places, Florence and Perryville. Perryville is the uh, female prison. Jody Arias is there. So, um, and the Florence complex is an all-male all -male complex. We are highly excited, and we hope that this will be funded through the Department of Education. All right, I'm taking questions. <coughs> Sir. That's correct. At this time, that is what ASU has decided to put into their grant application. It just depends on the limitations of the grant. Having been a federal grant writer myself, 
um, those are already pre-prescribed. And if the Department of Education and Congress allow this three-year grant to become um, what they call a study grant, um, it may be that those limitations are in place for only liberal arts positions. I cannot tell you that. I'm not involved with this. I just love it, and I am just knowledgeable of it to a limited degree. Yes, ma'am. It's possible. It just depends on the student, who they're, how they're qualified, and if they have any prior um, credits to come in. It's the same thing. It's not as if they're just a freshman. Um, I can't really tell you that because each student is a little bit different on their college um, progress. Took me five years to get a bachelor's degree. I was a little slow. Everything's provided, and it's a Pell Grant. They will have to complete a FAFSA application. Uh, they will need to qualify under this particular program according to the guidelines of the program. Um, so it, you know, it, it's a, it's an experimental, what they call experimental education grant. They will be pulling data. This will become a program, and they will study that for possible future funding opportunities, sir. We're working with the um, Department of English at this time. Is that it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, completions is uh, you have three sections, which is uh, math, reading, and language. So when you pass all those three sections, then that's a completion. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, it's an experiment, so I, I really don't know the number at this point in time. Um, it would be a cohort type of thing. Um, as one student leaves, another one might come in and replace it, him or her, um, and then they would move along. And I so. believe it would be no more than 20 per class. It's very possible. That's correct. Um, it, that's to be determined. Yes, ma'am. As of right now, I don't know the exact details of the grant. That is in ASU's purview. Um, I have not read the RFP on that. But as of right now, that's what's being proposed from ASU's point of view to put into this grant application. Uh, I can't tell you if there's any STEM elements in there. I cannot tell you that. Uh, it is public record. If you'll go to the Department of Education, Federal Department of Education uh, website, you can do Second Chance Pell Grant and be able to pull up that RFP. They're probably several hundred pages long. <laughs> I'm hot, I'm telling you. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. And let me, uh, I'm just going to jump in and help with this answer. Um, one of the things that we do struggle with in the education programs within the Department of Corrections is the constant movement. Um, we have systems in place that we kind of like to put holds, shall I say, on certain inmates to keep them in certain programs. Before we put inmates in certain programs, we like to know like background information on them, how long of time they have, do they have enough time to complete the program, and what happens life after. So as a component of the Department of Corrections, we'd like to step up and say, hey, well, can you just hold this inmate here for 18 months until they fix, you know, can complete that program. Um, most of the time, it's, it's done. Some of the times, we have no control of it because it's security and operations that really dictate to us what happens to their mate as well. But we try. Yes, ma'am.
Eighth grade. Most of the time, they're not released. Uh, they have to pass that mandatory literacy upon release. And we have systems in place to make sure that they do pass uh, before they leave. So those are students, I'm sorry, those are students who are mandated for classroom education Monday through Friday with a certified teacher. So it's, they are not moved and we ensure that they receive the proper education and the support to help them pass the mandatory literacy. There is. Uh, foreign nationals, we do, not, uh, we do not educate, we do not afford any education to 18 and above foreign nationals. 18 and lower, we do, because education law supersedes that one. No, it's free. It's we, free. It's free. And, and that's going to probably be my part once we get to there, um, how we transition our inmates through. Yes. OK, are there any other questions? All right, thank you for your time. Ooh, Laura, you are so high energy. I got to keep up now. I, I don't want to stand here. I just want to move around. Um, okay, my name is Bridget Carrington, and I know some of you have picked up on the accent. Yes, I am from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I, I do talk different. So I do say water and, you know, things like that. Up the street, not you know, down the block, not up the road. Okay, so one of the things, okay. One of the things that, one of the highlights that we have in the Department of Corrections are our CTE programs. These are partnerships with seven community colleges. Those are the seven up there. Um, all of our complexes except for Phoenix, we have a collaboration. So the question that you asked about, well, what happens when our students finish basic mandatory literacy. Well, now they can be afforded to go into our high school program, GED programs, and then segue into one of these vocational training programs with the community colleges. We offer in these CTE programs building maintenance and repair, carpentry, construction, electrical tech, HVAC, masonry, plumbing, and welding. Last year, we issued a total of 792 certificates to our inmates in those areas. That's a big thing because this will translate into jobs when they, when they get out of prison. Our enrollment for the CTE programs, Cochise College, 67, Central Arizona, 29, Rio Salado, 926. Their number is big because they're in a couple of our uh, complexes, Perryville, Lewis, and they also provide the distance learning um, to most of our inmates. Eastern Arizona, we have 105. Pima, 305. Northern Pioneer, 90. And Arizona Western, 149. So, one of the collaborations that we developed with these CTE programs, and it's also one of our director's initiative, is to provide some type of what happens after you finish these programs. Do you get a job? Well, we went searching, and we started a collaboration with Arizona Home Builders Association. And with that, we toured this association throughout our state, looking at our programs to see what is it that we needed to refine for the real workforce out in the real world. And we kind of tailored our programs to meet the needs of what 
the job market was in the real world. So I want to share a video with you of the hiring fair we did at our Yuma complex. My name is Lori. I am one of the education supervisors at the Yuma Complex, and today we are doing a hiring fair at the La Paz Unit. The opportunity has been extended to inmates who completed a voc ed class and are being released before July 1st of 2016. We have five different contractors here offering jobs to those inmates. I'm Connie Wilhelm, president of the Home Builders Association. We're here today at the San Luis prison um, doing a hiring affair with five of my subcontractors. I represent the Home Builders Association of Central Arizona and we need labor. We're here very excited about the programs that the inmates have participated in and look forward to many more of these hiring events. Mike Summers with Top Quality Masonry. I'm down here in Yuma for two days doing a job fair, trying to hire individuals out of the prison system through their construction trades division. Have actually had some good commitments that are going to be calling and coming to work in the next two to three weeks. Hi, my name is Chris Fiedler. I, uh, I attended the job fair today. I've been involved in the work-based education programs and they gave us the opportunity to come to the job fair today. Hopefully be able to find a career, something lifelong, be able to better my life, stay out of trouble and move forward instead of just in the same place. With, with much success, we took this show on the road. We didn't stop there. Uh, it, it is exhausting. Um, definitely, we have been refining um, what we need to teach in our CTE programs with our contracted colleges. Um, we did that hiring fair in December. And we said, hey, we have another great program in Safford. So, we went to Stafford in February, and with that, we had 37 participants in the Graham unit, and we kind of mimicked the same thing we did at Yuma. And during this hiring fair, the most interesting part that I found was that the inmates would walk up to the contractors and say, well, are you still going to hire me because I have a record? And of course, the contractors we brought there to the complexes, it was no secret that these were convicted felons and they were employable. So when one of the inmates walked up to me and said, is this for real? And I said, are you for real? <laughs> I, do you really want a job? I, do you want to put that best foot forward, and most of the inmates that we targeted were the inmates who completed these programs and also who were being released uh, from prison within 60 days so that we had their resumes, well, the contractors did. The contractors did the interview one-on-one. -on -one. The inmates brought resumes because our teachers in the classroom prepared them for that special day. Although they couldn't wear suits and ties, but they had nice haircuts and they looked very spiffy that day. Um, we took in a total of 350 applications just at Safford alone, which means a lot of them applied for multiple jobs. The contractors who were there have hired 12 so far. And, and we plan to take this, this show back on the road. We want to go to Perryville, and you would say, 
Females, home builders, yes, we have a great electrical program there um, that they would also participate in the hiring there. Um, so that's it from the highlights of what happens, what, how do we plan for uh, our inmates after life, after corrections. As the education program, we like to be a part of that for all of our students that participate in our education programs. Thank you. Uh, with the uh, monetary literacy, the GED, we have programs being loaded from central office, from a server to all the various complexes uh, so that when somebody gets moved from one complex, for instance, Florence to Yuma, that program is continued at the location that he's being relocated. The only places that probably might be difficult will be the CTE programs because uh, county lines would not permit some other programs to cross lines, but with the GED and mandatory literacy, I think uh, we are all aware of the continuity and uh, we're trying to get it straightened out. So, thank you. So I want to say thank you again to all of you. I am so grateful for your continued presence. And it's nice to always have some new voices at each of these conferences. In the past, we've been able to have ADC um, as well. And so it's neat being able to have more. Um, I've had the privilege to see the transformation of these ASU programs um, with ADC over the past four years and seeing how these classes grew to the, now we have actually some of these wonderful for, uh, flyers, the ones that are actually going to be handed out at the career fair today that are on our registration table. So it's so much to the point now that they're actually asking us, oh, by the way, our students want this class. Can you do it? And so we're like, We'll find the teachers. Um, and it's all because they've been so receptive and excited. And because they bought into it, they were, were able to encourage their students. And the students were also able to um, talk to their peers and say, hey, you should do this class. So much to make us feel kind of like celebrities when we're there, which is a very different experience um, with compared to much of the other experience of others. And so we do highly value that. Um, and again, I'm, I'm so thankful for you. I know, as you saw, Laura doesn't miss a beat. And I know she was, uh, I believe you were new to your position, right, when we both were coming in. So when I was becoming a volunteer as well. And again, thank you for always being available. I know there is a lot of headache and paperwork and unseen things that they have to go through in order to make these programs available and to make sure we can actually work through those extra kinks, a lot of the things that the panelists discuss, those barriers. And so they do that and they're unflappable. So thank you.